Hello and welcome to a guide slash review of Catan World Wonders, which is a fan-made expansion by Scott Eaton back in 2012, I think, for the fairly well-known game board game called Catan or Catan. And um, I picked this up, or our gaming group picked this up about a year and a half ago or so, and we were very pleasantly surprised as to how well this expansion plays and. Searching on YouTube, I couldn't find any guides or reviews or any information whatsoever on this. So I decided to go ahead and make one myself so more people can be made aware of this because this is an excellent expansion. If you're looking for something a little bit more in-depth and uh, a little bit more advanced, perhaps, than some of the official expansions, I would say that this expansion here definitely rivals some of the, some of the expansions released by... Um, the company that produces this game. So it's uh, well worth to check out. So what I'm going to do today is I'm first going to go through the actual product. Uh, then I'm going to go through the rules, show you how this works on the game board, and then finally go, go through each of the eight wonders and talk a little bit about their abilities and uh, strengths, weaknesses, those kind of things. So let's go ahead and start with the items. So what you see in front of you here uh, are basically all the things you need to print out. Obviously this isn't a licensed product, so you can't order this and have it shipped to you. You have to print off the PDFs um, in whatever way you choose. I chose to do it on double-sided glossy paper and then had it laminated at FedEx. And um, I bought some of these wooden tokens and these uh, black glass beads, but you don't even have to do that. And the DVD cover you see up here is certainly not required. But it actually comes as a nice little package, and if you want to go all in like I did, then it looks almost like a professional product to me. So you have the DVD cover here, nice little uh, artwork on the front, and you have a little description on the back showing you a few things of what is included. And then there's even an inset that you can print off and put inside the sleeve that has all the rules and general instructions for how to play. There's a little bit of background information on what actual wonders, the game's wonders, uh, are based on. So, nice little background, but certainly not needed. You can definitely just look up the rules on your phone or something like that if you have it. Now, you also get a card with an overview of all the abilities, and uh, you have sort of an abbreviated version of all the wonders on one card here so you don't have to look through all eight wonders every time you, you want to play one of them. So that's kind of neat. You have each of the eight wonders then separately. And uh, I got, went ahead and printed this double-sided. There are actually two versions, A and B versions for the art. And uh, whichever one is of your preference, you can print that or print both like I did. And then, uh, like I said, you also have these uh, wooden tokens these are actually wonder tokens that you put on the game board. And uh, there's a black and white side, there's a colored side. And then finally you have these tool chits. And uh, these go on the actual wonder to show how far along they are in the building process. So um, there are a few things to this. I should say that it's definitely an expansion for advanced players. It's uh, not something I would start with if you just learned how to play Catan. Um, but if you have played it for a while, you don't need to know any of the actual expansions for Catan to be able to pick this up. It can be f put in with any kind of game, any kind of official expansion works with this. So it has great versatility. I should say though, that it definitely will add a good hour or maybe even two to your game time. Uh, and that's for three to four players. If you end up playing five or six, then it's going to add two to three hours. So uh, you need to be prepared for a long game if you are looking to implement World Wonders. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the details and let's start by examining the rules. Okay, so even though this is um, for advanced players, it actually isn't that difficult to pick up on the rules, I mean. The rules are pretty straightforward and there aren't that many. What makes this a complicated expansion is that there are eight wonders that are all different. So in order to play this well, you sort of have to get to know those. But let's just quickly go over the, the main rules. So 
One difference is that you're supposed to start with a city in addition to a settlement, almost like cities and knights. Uh, you don't have to do that. We actually like to start with the original configuration of the original game with two settlements. But you're supposed to start with two, uh, with a city and a settlement. And so that's why I'm showing that here. And um, the whole basis of the game is based around a building of wonders. Now each wonder has its own prerequisite. So let's take this wonder here, uh, the Hanging Gardens, for example. Right next to the artwork, there is an illustration that indicates the prerequisite. In other words, what you need to be able to start building that wonder. In this case, it's having a city on a lumber hex or a forest hex, which a green player has here. So if you have that, you have the capability of starting to build that wonder. What you need to do then is pay the cost, two lumber and two grain in this case. Um, if you do that on your turn, you are starting that wonder. You take the wonder card into your possession and have it in front of you, just like another uh, resource. And uh, you find the wonder token, place it on the actual hex that meets the prerequisite, the gray side up. Gray means that it's incomplete, that you're in the process of building it. You would also then take a tool chit and place it on stage one, which indicates that you are now um, owning that wonder. It's incomplete, but you built a fourth of it, essentially. What that also means is that you now gain the ability on that stage where you're currently at, which in this case means that you can trade in three lumber for any one resource. And those abilities are really what makes this game unique and fun. And uh, each ability is different on each stage, on each wonder. So there's a lot of abilities here that we will go through. Now, on your next turn, you can pay the cost for stage two and then upgrade your wonder. Then you will move the tool chit to the next stage and you will now gain the ability on the stage two of that wonder. Now that doesn't mean that you'll lose the ability from stage one. These are cumulative. So they uh, add on top of each other, they stagger, so to speak. So when you get all the way up to stage four, then you will have every ability on the wonder. So in this case, that means three abilities and then five victory points. Most of the wonders have four or five victory points on the last stage. Some even have victory points on the earlier stages here. And that's pretty much it. Now you can only upgrade a wonder once per turn. And uh, the rules actually don't state whether that means um, whether you can build the first and the second stage on one turn. I'm not sure if the first stage is considered an upgrade or not, but um, we interpreted that you can't build more than one stage per turn. But obviously you can customize the rules as you see fit. Now, when you finish the wonder all the way up to stage four, you flip the wonder token over to its colored side. Now that actually makes a difference because if the wonder is incomplete, somebody can actually place the robber on that hex, which uh, renders you incapable of upgrading the wonder until you get rid of the robber. So the robber doesn't only prevent production from that hex, it actually prevents you from upgrading your wonder. Okay, it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't stop any of the abilities, but it prevents the upgrading of the wonder. And that can be crucial in some cases. It does not, however, prevent you from starting a wonder. So if the robber's on the forest hex here, you can still start the wonder on stage one, but you cannot upgrade it to stages two, three, or four. Okay, an additional rule is that at any point in time, uh, any of the other players can actually seize or steal your wonder. Now that comes at a price um, because you have to use three development cards, three knight cards actually, in order to do so. You have to uh, use three knight cards that you have unused in your hand at the same time. Normally it's not allowed to use more than one of these, but this is an exception. So you can use these, turn all of those into the bank. They don't even count towards your largest army. You can turn those into the bank and then you can take over the wonder. Now the wonder has to be incomplete for that to be possible. You cannot seize a wonder that is on stage four. 
So that's an incentive for the player to finish the wonder as quickly as possible. So you won't uh, move the wonder, the wonder remains where it was built, but you just uh, take possession of the actual wonder card. Now, we added a rule here that wasn't stated in the actual release, that the player who seizes or attempts to seize the wonder also has to meet the prerequisite of the wonder. Uh, we felt that that was necessary. When we started playing this, uh, we saw that some players only focused on seizing wonders and never were interested in starting one themselves. And that made for a very destructive game. And it wasn't a very positive vibe during the game. So when we added the prerequisite requirement, then it actually gave people an extra incentive to start their own wonders. And it gave it, a, I would say, a better purpose to the seizing. They sort of deserve to take over the wonder if they met the prerequisite themselves. Uh, we also added the rule that you cannot seize a wonder and then upgrade it the same turn. Because, again, what players tried to do was wait until the wonder is on stage three, then seize it, and then finish the wonder the same turn, and therefore render it unseizable for other players. And if you did that with two or three wonders, you basically won the game like that. So... Um, you, of course, can change the rules as much as you want, but we recommend adding or changing those two rules to the game. It just made it more balanced and more fun, in our opinion. I think that's pretty much it for the rules. Um, there are a few special rules and exceptions that come into play when we look at each individual wonder, which we will do next. Okay, so let's take a look at each individual wonder a little bit more close up. So there are eight wonders in total. Something I didn't say is that uh, no two players, of course, can start the same wonder. Once you have the one wonder in your possession, then uh, nobody else can take that unless they seize it. They can start it at their own will separately from you. So if, uh, let's say, red player here is uh, starting the Hanging Gardens. Um, obviously, the Hanging Gardens requires that you have a city on... A forest hex and there is one wonder for each of the five resource hexes. So those are called sort of the, the five standard wonders. And then there are three more wonders that are a little bit more special case. So what they all have in common, those five, is that on the first two stages they have a, a trade advantage. So and that trade advantage is special for their resource, for the resource that that hex produces. So in this case it's three lumber for any one resource uh, and on stage two it's uh, two of any one resource for one lumber so those are pretty good i mean it gives you an extra uh, way to manage your resources a little bit better and getting discounts uh, versus regular trade or even if uh, you have a three to one harbor but um, those abilities are not game changing by any stretch uh, they're they're okay and they can be very useful but they can also be quite useless in some cases. Where the five uh, base wonders have their strength is in the stage three ability. So for the Hanging Gardens, that is Renegade. Now what Renegade does is it gives you the ability to, when you place a robber, steal from every single building around um, the hex that the robber's on. So if red player places the robber on the two sheep here, uh, he or she can basically steal from both the green player and the orange player. So you get two resources. If the robber was placed on the eight sheep here, then it actually gives the red player the capability of stealing two cards from the orange because he has two buildings on this hex and one card from the green player. So you can get a maximum of three resources instead of one. So that can also be very useful. Uh, however, I wouldn't say that that ability is among the best. Uh, on the contrary, I probably would say it's among the weakest of the stage three abilities. Uh, it can be very good, but uh, it's not something that's going to win you the game for sure. And I think out of all the wonders that we've played, this is probably the one I've seen finished uh, least. I don't think I've seen this finished more than once. It's more of a last resort. If there's no other wonders left to play, you sort of go for this one. And if you think about it, it makes sense. 
You have five victory points at the end here, but all of the base wonders have that. So that's not any better or worse than any of the other wonders. But um, if you think about it, uh, how many times do you actually roll a seven during the course of a game? Um, two, three times maybe at most. And how many knights do you use? Probably not more than two or three. At most three, I would say, to go for the largest army. So let's say at most six times. And how many cards would you end up stealing with the Renegade ability? I would say on average two. Sometimes three, yes, but sometimes even only one. So at most six times during a game, you end up getting two resources instead of one. That'll essentially give you six extra resources for the entire game on a stage three ability, and that's not a lot. Uh, and since most players get this wonder kind of late in the game, they're probably going to end up getting even fewer resources than that. So the game ultimately is still only about resources, and resources will win you the game. So I don't think this stage uh, three ability does enough to make this wonder very good. Uh, it can be useful, like I said, but uh, probably among the weaker ones. So that's the Hanging Gardens. Okay, the second wonder is uh, the Illustrious Walls. And as you see, this requires a city on um, a hills hex, or a, a brick producing hex, which Green Player has over here. And uh, this is the second of the five base wonders, and uh, the first two abilities are then the same for stages one and two, uh, as they were for the Hanging Gardens, except that you replace brick uh, for the lumber resource. The stage three ability is called Route, and uh, if the Hanging Gardens is one of the weaker wonders, this is probably one of the better ones. Uh, one I've seen uh, built a lot, finished a lot. It's probably among the, the first two or three that people choose out of the eight included in this uh, expansion. And um, what Route does is you get the chance once per turn to roll the, the dice. If you get a six, seven, or eight when you roll, I did not get that now. If you get a six, seven, or eight, then you get to move the robber, just as if you played a regular knight card. You get to place the robber, you get to steal a card, and you obviously get to remove the robber from your tile and uh, prevent production from the tile it's on. So this is a very, very useful ability. Now, of course, it comes with a chance of not getting anything from it if you don't roll six, seven, or eight, but the chances of doing that is close to 50%, not even over 50, it's, I think it's just under 50% chance. So every other turn on average, you're gonna get a resource. If you get this wonder up to stage three within the first four turns, then you essentially have one extra resource plus prevention of production from other tiles for the rest of the game, unless somebody seizes your wonder. And that is a, a killer ability. That is going to be game-changing, and it's going to be good for you and annoying for others. Uh, anytime you can uh, get something extra while also removing something from opponents, that is really where the strength lies. And uh, interestingly enough, this ability route actually makes the Hanging Gardens ability Renegade a lot better. Because if you remember, that enables you to steal... Uh, multiple cards from people or from each building around the tile. If you can couple that with uh, getting uh, the ability to move the robber every other turn, then you have a combo that really can win you the game. So this actually makes the Hanging Garden a better wonder. So if you go for the Illustrious Walls, I would suggest the next one you should go for is the Hanging Gardens. And those two together uh, can be uh, winning you the game, essentially. So this is one of the better wonders. Of course you have five victory points for stage four, as you do for all the base ones. Um, so that's the illustrious walls. Okay, so the third wonder is the Royal Mausoleum. That is requiring a city on a field hex or a grain producing hex, like the orange player has here. And uh, the first two abilities are the same as for the Hanging Gardens and the illustrious walls except that grain is the resource now. And uh, you also get five victory points when you finish this on stage four. The third ability is a little bit different from the other ones. It doesn't yield you any new resources. It's called Vault. It instead gives you the ability to 
keep six extra resources that do not count towards the, the hand limit of seven. So you don't have to throw any cards away, even if you have six in addition to the seven in your hand. And uh, those six resources are protected from uh, being stolen from any other player, uh, but you have to use them if you take them out of the vault. So you can only take them out and use them on your turn, but you can actually put extra cards in there on any player's turn. As soon as you get them from the produ production roll, you can put whatever resources you want in there. The only limitation is you cannot use them for trades, uh, either with the bank or with other players. Uh, you cannot use them for harbor trades either. Uh, this is an ability that we actually thought was going to be among the weakest before we started playing uh, this expansion, just looking at the wonders before we knew anything about how they actually played. But it's actually played out to be one of the better abilities. Um, even though it doesn't give you resources, like I said, it's a, an invaluable peace of mind to know that your resources are not going to be stolen and uh, that you have the resources you need for some kind of special um, purchase you want to make on your turn. So a, a very good Ability not among the best, but uh, definitely not the weakest either. So uh, one wonder that I see being played by quite a few players. So uh, that's the, the Royal Mausoleum. Okay, so the next wonder is the Gilded Statue, where you have to have a city on a pasture hex or um, wool producing hex. Again, like the orange player has and the green player has here. Uh, again, no difference in the first two abilities or the five victory points in stage four. The only difference is the third ability, Tribute, which is three sheep for a development card. Not much to say about this. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is a heavy sheep uh, specialized wonder and uh, a very good wonder to get if you have multiple spots with good numbers on sheep. Not so much if the number you have is a two, like in the case of green here. So it depends a little bit on whether you think this is a good ability or not. I generally don't like to buy too many development cards when I play. So for me, this isn't a wonder that I choose, but I see a lot of players playing it early and um, doing well with it. And being able to pump out repeating uh, development cards is, is and can be an important function. I wouldn't say it's game winning because you don't get any extra resources from this. You're still using three but they're all of a resource that you probably get plentiful amounts of. So again, a, a good ability, not among the best, probably in the, in the medium range, I would say. So that's the Gilded Statue. Okay, so the last wonder of the five basic wonders is the Marble Temple with a city on a mountain hex or an ore producing hex. Um, this is probably the best out of the five basic wonders for sure, and one of the very best wonders in the entire expansion. Um, nothing different in the two first abilities, but Salvage on stage three here is probably the best single ability in the entire expansion, where you basically at the end of your turn can get one resource back of your choosing from each purchase you made that turn. Uh, I think that excludes wonder upgrades. They're not considered purchases, but anything else you build, um, like roads, ships, settlement cities, or development cards, uh, you can get back one resource from each of those purchases at the end of the turn. And they don't have to be the same type of resource. They can be any resources you want. So essentially, this means you can get probably one or two resources back every single turn. And if you get this on round three, which would be the earliest, you basically are looking at probably a return of 15 to 20 resources through the course of the game, which is going to win you the game for sure. So this is probably the resource or the wonder rather that I see being played earliest uh, on a consistent basis if there are good numbers on mountain hexes and definitely a game winning wonder. And of course you have five victory points as well uh, for stage four. So that's the marble temple. Okay, the first of the three special wonders is the Towering Colossus, where you have to have a city on a harbor. 
So no specific harbor, any of the harbors will do. And now you have three abilities on the first three stages that are unique and do not look like any of the other abilities on the previous five wonders. The first stage ability is Corsair and um, then you can actually put the robber on a harbor, not on an actual land tile. You get to steal a resource as you would normally from anyone who uses that harbor. And while the robber is positioned there, uh, you can actually take one resource every time the person who owns the harbor uses the harbor. So for instance, if a green player here had this three to one harbor and I had Corsair and I put my robber on the harbor, I could steal a resource first. And then if green player would trade in say three brick for one grain, I would get one of those three bricks. So you sort of have contacts in the harbor and um, you get a resource from the trade. So that's a pretty useful ability, especially it being stage one. You can essentially playing, play it on the first turn and um, keep getting resources as long as the robber is there. As soon as the robber is taken away, then um, it's no use to you. So that's the drawback, but it's a good ability for, for stage one for sure. Stage two is Viaduct. And that just gives you an alternate cost for roads or ships. Keep in mind that you can use that ability even if you don't play seafarers. So you don't even actually have to play with boats in order to use the cost of a boat for a road, if that makes sense. So you can use uh, one wool and one lumber to pay for a road even if you don't play with boats in that scenario. So that's a, a nice ability, but certainly not a game changer. The third ability, which doesn't have any name, it's just a trade advantage where you get two to one for all five resources. That is probably, if not the best ability in the, in the expansion, one of them in the top three for sure, to get all five two to one harbors in one wonder is um, very crucial to winning the game. And, um, if you couple that with having the city on a three to one, then you have all possible harbors just from one city. So um, that obviously ties in with the theme of this wonder being on a harbor. And then you have five victory points to, to end the wonder on stage four. So this is among the better wonders, not the best one, but probably in the top three or four, I would say. So that's the towering Colossus. Okay, the next wonder is the Pharaoh's Lighthouse. And uh, here you have to have a city on only one land tile. So that's the toughest prerequisite to attain out of all the eight. So it means that you can only be on the tip like this. So if you have a city here, you're on two land tiles, here or here would meet this prerequisite. So that's a great sacrifice, obviously, because you only get income from one tile from that city. So this wonder needs to have better abilities than the other wonders in order to compete, in order for the wonders to be balanced. And it does. The first one is called Guidepost. Essentially, you uh, get one free ship or road uh, for building one ship or road once per turn. So if you build one road, you can get an extra road from that, or if you build one ship, you can get an extra ship from that once per turn. So it basically saves you two resources, or gives you two free resources per turn if you build one of those each turn. So that's a very good ability, and it's a stage one ability, so it's something you can use early on in the game and will probably benefit you for the rest of the game. Very easy to get longest road with this ability. Second stage is just two victory points. There's a total of six for this entire wonder, which uh, is probably added to sort of counteract the sacrifice of the prerequisite for this one. The stage three ability is Searchlight, which means that you are basically immune to all effects of the robber. So nobody can steal from you and uh, the tile will continue to produce resources even if the robber is on your tile. And uh, you still need to discard, though, if somebody rolls a seven and you have more than seven cards. 
that isn't uh, caused by the robber per se. So um, immunity to the robber for the rest of the game is something that can win you the game in the long run. Uh, overall, a very good wonder, but not among the best simply because the prerequisite is such a you're such at a such a disadvantage from having a city on only one land tile. The sacrifices of lack of resources from that outweighs actually the benefits of the abilities, I would say. So uh, that's the Pharaoh's Lighthouse. So the last wonder is the Great Pyramids. Uh, and here, obviously, you have to have a city on the desert hex, which also comes at a great cost. Not as great of a cost as the Lighthouse wonder. But um, still, you can't get three resources from being on a desert. So this also needs to be a little bit better than the other ones. And the first ability is called Raider. Here, whenever you place or, um, yeah, whenever you place the robber on somebody's uh, wonder tile, they don't get the abilities from that wonder any longer, as long as the robber stays on that wonder tile. Uh, that excludes those that are finished. The wonders that are finished are not affected. And, uh, but that can actually cut off the abilities of other players. And remember that in addition to stopping the ability, it prevents that player from upgrading the wonder further. So doing this at a crucial stage in the game can actually set back other players enough to make you win the game. And uh, this is a stage one ability. So you have that for uh, the greater part of the game if you start out on a desert anyway. The Stage two ability is called Abundance, and uh, that's pretty easy. It's uh, you can hold four extra cards on your hand without having to throw away half of them when seven rolls. So you can hold eleven cards in your hand, almost like having two city walls for the Citizen Knights expansion. And you also get two victory points from stage two. Stage three is the powerhouse, and that is called Counterfeit. Counterfeit gives you the ability to trade in X of one resource for X of another resource. And you can do that once per turn. So I can, for example, trade in four sheep for four lumber or four ore. And um, being able to choose what resource and how many that you don't have to trade in your entire hand, for example, and that it's one for one, that is an ability that rivals a few of the other good ones as the best ability in the in the expansion. That coupled with the other two abilities on this wonder makes it definitely in the top three, even a contender for the best ability. The major drawback of course is the prerequisite. Nobody wants to be on the desert tile, but you have to to start this wonder. So uh, counterfeit alone makes this wonder excellent and the other two definitely makes it one that is always worthwhile getting, even if you're on the desert. So that's the Great Pyramids. Okay, so there you have it, Catan World Wonders. An expansion that I uh, personally can recommend. Um, I would probably give it an 8.5 out of 10 if I were to give it a score. Um, it's very balanced. All wonders are good and uh, none are too good, none are weak. And uh, it's a very fun expansion to play. Most players that have played it find it very enjoyable, mostly because each player's experience is different because all the wonders are different. And it's fairly easy to pick up even for inexperienced players. It makes sense. And all the wonders are, of course, based on real world wonders. So some people are familiar with some of these. And uh, just overall, it's, it's pretty easy to pick up and uh, easy to make the game fun. I would say that it's maybe a little bit difficult to play well for uh, most players. It takes a few times before you get into it. That might be putting a few players off. Also the added game time, which is probably the biggest drawback. Uh, it's not for everybody and uh, some players might not want to play this again due to the extra hour or two. But overall a very fun experience um, and uh, definitely one that our gaming group can recommend. Um, if you guys end up downloading this and trying it out yourself and have questions, please let me know. Please comment with any suggestions or any feedback or criticism you might have on the video or on the expansion overall. Um, 
I will put a link to the download page in the video description, so feel free to check that out. Also, make sure that you check out our, our guide for Catan World Wonders Revisited, which is an expansion for this expansion that we have made personally, especially catering to some of the other expansions, especially seafarers and explorers and pirates, and also rivers of Catan. So make sure you check that out if you enjoyed this, or um, if you try this out and want to further add to this expansion of World Wonders. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and have a good day. Bye-bye.